I can only really describe this haunting as a horrific and aggressive haunting. This story is about a number of terrifying paranormal experiences that were had by a family who moved into a house on the Wolverhampton Road, Pelsall. Although long dead, the previous occupant was not prepared to give up her home to the new occupants. And there's a photograph to prove it. Back in 2001, I visited a couple who live in a property on the Wolverhampton Road, Pelsall. And what they told me was quite extraordinary. When they first bought their property back in 1986, it was just what they were looking for. The house was a semi-detached property with plenty of garden. And they had a good neighbour, an elderly gentleman by the name of Colin, who they were quick to befriend. Mrs Y used to cook his Sunday lunch every week and Mr Y used to help with the garden as the elderly neighbour lived alone. In getting to know their elderly neighbour it wasn't long before the couple began to uncover the history of their home. In his younger years Colin was married to an astute businesswoman who paid for the two houses to be built by her son-in-law. Colin's stepdaughter Beryl and her husband lived in the house which had been purchased by Mr and Mrs Y. As an elderly man, Colin had outlived his wife, stepdaughter and son-in-law. Mr and Mrs Y, who had two young children at the time, knew that they would need to extend the property to make the box room larger, as at this stage the room was not big enough to accommodate a bed which meant that the children had to share a bedroom until the building work was done. Their daughter took an instant dislike to her bedroom very shortly after moving into the house and was quite prepared to swap her large room for her brother's box room. It later emerged in conversation with Colin that his stepdaughter Beryl had died in her bed in this bedroom. Naturally, the couple did not tell the children about this. Mrs Y, who confesses to being somewhat of a sceptic, has over the years been unable to account for many things which have happened at the house and has learned to live with it. The couple who still live at the house experience paranormal activity to this day. Although their daughter did not like her bedroom, in the beginning, nothing really significant happened. However, it was not long before Beryl started to make her presence felt. Sometimes family members found it difficult to walk past the room without feeling compelled to shut the door. Mrs Y said that it was almost as if someone was standing there in the doorway with their hands on their hips, saying, Well, shut the door. As their neighbour Colin started to become ill, paranormal activity in the house suddenly accelerated. On one occasion during the daytime, their daughter's bed lifted off the floor and shook violently whilst she was lying on it doing her homework. Terrified by this experience, their daughter did not sleep in the room for weeks. As Colin continued to get worse, Mr and Mrs Y did their best to feed and look after him whilst attempting to contact his relatives to inform them of his condition. Mr and Mrs Y did finally manage to contact a nephew of Colin who was at the time living some distance away from the property. He did however visit but booked into a nearby hotel. At this stage Colin was very ill and was suffering from hallucinations. Mr and Mrs Y had to talk him out of contacting the police on a number of occasions as he told them that people were coming from the walls and floors of his house and that at night his house was filled with strangers. With his nephew aware of the situation and Mr and Mrs Y offering what they could in addition to going out to work every day 
Colin was otherwise alone, day and night. When they were at home, Mr and Mrs Y told Colin to bang on the ceiling with a broom handle if he needed help, or if he couldn't get to the phone. During this time, the house had returned to normality, and their daughter had resumed sleeping in her bedroom again, until one night she was suddenly woken by a heavy weight at the bottom of her bed, which had tugged down her quilt. As she jolted up in bed to instinctively pull back her quilt, she was faced with a man in a tweed suit, sitting at the bottom of her bed, talking so quickly that she couldn't understand a word he was saying. Having gone to bed in temper that night, she snatched back the quilt, covered her head and went back to sleep. In the morning she related what she had seen to her parents and told them that she would never sleep in the bedroom again and would sleep on the settee thereafter. After spending the largest part of an uncomfortable night on the settee in the living room, their daughter defiantly returned to her bedroom. As she settled down, she could hear pacing up and down in her room and the sound of someone breathing heavily. She refused to look covered her ears and turned over to face the wall and defiantly went back to sleep. On the following morning the family discovered that Colin had died. Based on the description given by their daughter, Mrs Y believes that the man may have been Colin's son-in-law who may have returned from the grave to warn of his father-in-law's imminent death. After their daughter got married and left home, Beryl's room remained empty for some years. At one point, however, their son decided to use his sister's old bedroom as a recording studio. But it wasn't long before he started to feel uneasy when working in the room. He told me that he felt as if he was never alone in the room and that he was constantly being watched and it always felt as if someone was standing right behind him. Sometimes the feeling was so intense that he had to leave the room with work unfinished. Unable to shake the uneasy feeling, their son ended up moving his recording equipment into the garage. Mrs Y told me that in his student days their son used to dare his friends to spend the night in the haunted bedroom whenever it was available. Those who did stay never managed to spend the whole night in the room. Mrs Y told me that it was not unusual to find his friends fast asleep in sleeping bags on the living room floor. Although most of the paranormal activity has revolved around their daughter's bedroom, other family members have also been affected by paranormal activity whilst upstairs and in other parts of the house. Mr and Mrs Y have had their quilt pulled off the bed on a number of occasions and have had things thrown at them by invisible hands. Some years ago at Christmas time a large plastic Christmas bell threw itself off the wall in the living room and hit Mr Y on the head. At the time Mr Y was sitting on the opposite side of the room Mrs Y has also been pushed and pinched by an invisible force whilst in the bedroom. They also told me that it's not unusual to be aware of an invisible presence standing behind you anywhere in the house. Mr Y related to me that on one occasion when he was washing up in the kitchen at lunchtime, he became suddenly aware of an overwhelming presence behind him. As he ignored it, he continued to wash up. As the feeling intensified, he said that he could feel the hairs on the back of his neck standing up. He continued to ignore the feeling, finished washing up and turned around to leave the kitchen. As he did, he saw a large black figure standing in the doorway of the kitchen, which made him jump out of his skin. Within seconds, the dark presence had simply disappeared. Having seen a photograph of Beryl in the past, 
Mr. Y is certain that the other lady which has been seen in the house is not Beryl. Mr. Y told me that it is not unusual to find yourself following this lady upstairs and across the landing. When you suddenly realise it's not who you think it is, it simply disappears. This apparition is quite vivid. The lady has long black hair and wears a long sleeved bottle green crushed velvet top and a long black skirt with a silver chain belt around it. This strange and inexplicable experience has been had by Mr Y and his daughter on a number of occasions. Mr Y added that the family dog always refused to go upstairs. Mrs Y went on to recall a harsh winter many years ago. Snow had fallen heavily overnight and five or six inches of snow lay underfoot. That morning when she looked out of her bedroom window she noticed that there was a perfect figure of eight made out of tiny footsteps in the thick snow which had fallen on the back lawn. But the strange thing was that there were no footprints approaching the figure or leaving it. She also remembered that it was at this time that her children and the family dog were being hit by snowballs being thrown by unseen hands. After watching to see where the snowballs were coming from, she made a hasty exit at one point to accost the perpetrators. But there was no one to be seen. Mr and Mrs Y were baffled at this time as there were no neighbours or hiding places where the snowballs could be coming from. Mrs Y told me that paranormal activity is present in the house usually around the time of general maintenance or decorating when Beryl really makes her presence felt. A few years ago when decorating two sets of light fittings blew and a watch and a clock stopped working. As usual, they attributed this to Beryl, who clearly dislikes change. On a later occasion, when Mr and Mrs Y were replacing the dining room carpet, their heavy wooden kitchen table was left standing firmly on the concrete floor. That evening, whilst watching television in the other room with their son, they heard what sounded like a hard ball being bounced across the table and what sounded like the table rocking loudly on the concrete floor. As they dashed into the dining room to find out what was going on, the kitchen light fitting blew and plunged them into darkness. After the carpet had been replaced, the clock which they had failed to restore back to working order following the first incident suddenly sprang back to life for no apparent reason. The only part of the house that has remained unaffected by paranormal activity is their son's bedroom, which they believe is because it is a new structure. Mrs Y explained to me that the two rooms feel very different and that the new room seems to gather no dust. Beryl's room, on the other hand, requires dusting almost every day, despite the fact that both rooms have been unused as bedrooms for many years. Mrs Y told me that the doorbell is often rung by an invisible hand and this can happen at any time of day or night. Over the years electrics have been checked and several bells later they still have this problem which they believe is Beryl just letting them know that she is still there. More recently a strange image was captured by the doorbell camera. Although not used as a bedroom for many years Following renovation work in 2011, the owners took photographs. When the photographs were developed, Mr and Mrs Y were shocked by what they saw. Although there is no low-level light source in the room other than the single pendant light in the ceiling, there appears to be a light source in the shape of a head and shoulders to the right-hand side of the chair. The photograph was taken from the bedroom doorway on a bright sunny day, so it was unnecessary for a light to be switched on in the room. When the photograph was taken, the camera flash did not go off because the room was bright enough. 
An identical photograph, taken seconds after the first, had no strange light source in it at all. For Mr and Mrs Y, the photograph is proof enough that there is something definitely in that room. Mr Y said that the first thing he thought of when he saw the photograph was that it looked like something was trying to force its way out of the wall and into the bedroom. Although now renovated and decorated, this room remains as an unused bedroom. Just before Halloween this year, I caught up with the family again to find out if they were still experiencing paranormal activity. Once again, the answer was yes. Mr and Mrs Y were sitting in the living room watching the TV one evening when suddenly the door flung open for no reason. Mr and Mrs Y looked at each other in shock as there was a bolt at the top of the door that holds both doors in place as they are double doors. A short time later a door handle on a wardrobe door made a bang as if someone had grabbed hold of it and slammed it against the wardrobe door. The noise woke up Mr and Mrs Y but nothing else happened on this occasion. However, some time later something did happen. Late one evening when Mr and Mrs Y entered their bedroom they noticed that their pendant light switch on Mr Y's bedside was swinging like a pendulum for no reason. No windows were open in the house and there were no drafts. Mr Y reached over and stopped the light switch from swinging. Later that night Mr Y found himself uncomfortable and unable to sleep, tossing and turning for what seemed like hours. After turning over yet again for the last time Mr Y opened his eyes out of frustration. Then to his shock and horror before him he saw the angry and aggressive face of an old woman. As he desperately tried to reach the pendant light switch, the terrifying face disappeared. Once again, Beryl was making her presence felt, and this time had Mr Wise full attention. Shortly after this incident, the key to the padlock on the shed went missing. After having looked everywhere in the house, including clothing and pockets, etc., the key could not be found. In the end, Mr Y had no option but to take off the latch to gain access to the contents of the shed. He then replaced the latch and the padlock. Late that day, Mrs Y was making the bed after stripping it off earlier. As she threw the quilt up in the air to freshen the feathers, then lay it back down again on the mattress. There was the lost key on top of it. Mrs Y was perplexed. Since having gone missing weeks before, the bedding had been changed at least three times. Furthermore, Mrs Y has never been in the habit of laying out clothes on the bed, hence there was no reason at all why a key should have suddenly appeared. As what was considered to be a final insult, after leaving the bathroom the following day, a four-pack of toilet rolls jumped off the chair at the top of the stairs and hit Mr Y on the back of his legs. In August this year, Mr Y was drowsing on the chair opposite to the TV, when suddenly he became aware of a figure entering the room via the door to the right of him. The figure then stood in front of him, with the back of it facing Mr Y. As he focused on the figure, Mr Y saw a dark green brocade dress with very dark maroon flowers on it, rather like old-fashioned curtains. Then he realised that it wasn't Mrs Y, as she was lying on the settee. As he looked over at his wife, then back again, the figure disappeared. When I visited the couple in October, Mr Y told me that over the last couple of months the bedroom had been plagued by a large orb which was about the size of a dinner plate. The orb has been seen by Mr Y on four occasions so far. On the first occasion the brightness of the orb woke Mr Y. At first
first he thought it was the morning sun, or a car headlight shining through the bedroom curtains. But when he opened his eyes, he was faced with a giant orb hovering in front of him in the darkness of the bedroom. When he focused on the giant orb, it suddenly disappeared. On other occasions, the orb has been seen at head height, either by the front window or in front of the mirror on the opposite side of the room. Around this time, Mr Y was woken up one morning by someone calling his name. Like many other families whose homes are subject to paranormal activity, Mr and Mrs Y have learned to live with the paranormal activity in their home and are refusing to be forced out of their home by a ghost.